Welcome to a show where you will hear about how our liberty is being eroded by the very people that swear an oath to protect it. Today, the president signed a big new anti-terrorism bill that would expand the government's ability to track down terrorists, but at some cost. On this show, we will discuss many of the lies that the government, the government that hates us, by the way, we will discuss the lies that the people in positions of power and influence spread every day. And what is the best way to confuse children? Confuse them about their sexuality, confuse them about their gender, expose them to things that their little brains are not ready for yet. That is how they are confusing children. It is leading to chaos. And big daddy government, of course, can be there to pick, up, pick us all up and take care of us at the end of it. We will also talk about how current elected leadership at all levels of government has been corrupted by power and control, as well as discuss the types of leadership needed to correct our republic's course. We the people. Well, it's time to remember that we the people are the government. Providing assistance for the Ukrainians to defeat the Russians, that's the number one priority for the United States right now. I am your host, Larry Linton, retired U.S. Navy Command Master Chief and prior Tennessee House of Representatives District 12 candidate, and welcome to the Liberty Leadership and Lies podcast. Welcome to this week's show, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I'm currently preparing for another consulting trip out of town. This time it will be in East Texas, West Louisiana, and then finishing up in South Texas. There will be a whole bunch of windshield time this trip, logging in lots of miles, visiting with a bunch of different clients. I'm looking forward to doing my small part to engage, encourage, and possibly have a positive impact on large groups of people on this engagement. Now, here comes the weekly reminder where I ask the audience, if you like this content, be sure to share the podcast on all of your socials and with all of your email contacts. You can also follow me on all of my socials. I'm on Twitter, True Social, Instagram, Gab, Parlor, Getter, and of course, we can't forget Telegram. Just search for Larry Linton or Liberty Leadership and Lies on any of those platforms. My primary page is on the web at libertyleadershipandlies.com. I also put out a monthly newsletter that contains links to all of my social media pages, as well as other information that does not make it into the podcast. If you're interested in signing up to receive the newsletter, just send me an email to larry at libertyleadershipandlies.com and let me know that you would like to start receiving it. Now, most of my content on the podcast and in my newsletter primarily deals with what is happening here in Sevier County, as well as all over the great volunteer state. Although each week I do try to ensure some national content is included in each episode and sometimes in the newsletter because I don't want to leave out those people that have decided to take action and get involved in our system of self-governance where they live. So, please be sure to subscribe to this podcast on whatever platform you listen to it on. The podcast is hosted on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Overcast, Amazon Music, Audible, iHeartRadio, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, Stitcher, YouTube, and Rumble, and many others. You can share the show from those podcast hosts through your social media pages as well as your email contacts. I am going to plug again the fact that if you visit the show's homepage on Spotify for Podcasters, there's a button you can click on located on the show's homepage so that you can support the show monetarily through a monthly donation. I'm only asking that if you can support the show monetarily, please consider doing so. It's not necessary, but it would be greatly appreciated. Now let's get into this week's topic of liberty. I'm going to start this week's episode with a question. A simple question, really, but one which should get the audience to really think. Which I know my listeners are really great at critical thinking. If you've been following the blog on the website, you know that I've been asking this question frequently for the week now. The question is this. What, or who, do you think is the greatest threat to liberty today in our constitutional republic? Well, let's break down some possible answers. First, is it China and that communist country's pervasiveness into every aspect of our society? The amount of influence that the Chinese Communist Party has in our social media platforms as well as our regular news media. 
Maybe it's through the influence they have purchased in the number of politicians they own outright. Or even the land purchases that China is engaged in all over our country. The latest estimates have it at nearly 200,000 acres. And that's just the official count. There is no telling how much land they own through intermediaries and other such proxies. But is China and the Chinese Communist Party the biggest threat to our liberty here at home? Or are they a partner with, or a subset of, what I believe is the biggest threat? You should be taking notice of how the petrodollar is being replaced by the petro yuan all over the world. This is a titanic shift in global politics, weakening the dollar and setting up China as the biggest financial player on the planet. And this is only enabled further by the current feckless occupant of the White House and his communist handlers. But not just them, as we will discuss that later in the show. As a matter of fact, I was having that very discussion with a couple at a local business earlier this week. We were discussing the move to a global digital currency being made by our own government, as well as the actions in the Tennessee General Assembly lately that will enhance that move. It was halfway through the discussion that this couple asked my name. You see, the business proprietor of where we were at, he was asked the question by this couple, and he referred them to me without introduction. Anyway, it turns out after they asked my name and I told them who I was, they informed me that they had in fact voted for me during the November 2022 midterm elections. Small world, huh? But back to the topic. If you're an astute observer of politics here in this country, there is one fact that is plainly obvious. The people on the left, meaning the communists, absolutely want to weaken this country, internally and externally. And they are quite obvious about this too. But moving on, let's consider is the next threat, is the bigger threat, Russia. It's a country who brings the horror of nuclear war with them in the current global state of affairs. After all, they are a near-peer competitor, both militarily and geopolitically, but based upon what is going on in Europe right now, does Russia pose the greatest threat to our liberty here at home? Keep in mind, Russia has long been a destabilizing force in global affairs, from Lenin and the USSR all the way up to Putin and the Russian Federation today. That country, and the former group of countries of the USSR, have long been led by strongmen whose goal has been world domination. Because it is easier for a dictator or an oligarchy to emerge in a country controlled by socialism than it is for them to rise to power in a constitutional republic, where all governmental power is derived from the citizens. So the question is this, is Russia the biggest threat to our liberty, to the liberty of the citizens of the United States of America right now? Or like China, do they just play a supporting role to what I believe is the biggest threat? Moving on, what about the narco-terrorists and the drug cartels that are using this administration's weakness on border security to enable the flooding of our nation with deadly fentanyl and the even deadlier incursion into the homeland by Central and South American gangs? Don't get me wrong here. While this administration has reached peak levels in enabling this invasion, it isn't just this administration that has shown weakness on border security. Plenty of prior administrations bear their share of the blame on weak border security as well. This administration takes the cake with their gall, though. It was just on the 21st of March that the ice cream connoisseur tweeted out a statement, and it is this, quote, MAGA House Republicans put out extreme budget proposals that would eliminate funding for over 2,000 Border Patrol agents, undermining our ability to combat drug trafficking. My budget keeps our borders secure while expanding legal pathways for migrants seeking asylum. Unquote. I actually thought that that was a parody account at first. It's almost as if that dementia-riddled old man and the rest of his America last administration cannot see what is happening along our southern border. Cannot see or won't see. Also, it is like they don't think that everyday Americans do not know what is happening along the Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and California borders with Mexico. Our neighbor to the south is a failed nation state, in my opinion, 
much like Somalia in Africa. The elected government does not control things in that nation. The narco-terrorists and the drug cartels control that country. These narco-terrorists and drug cartels are also a people without any regard for the sanctity of life, much along the same lines of the left and their pro-abortion supporters inside our own country. Narco-terrorists and the drug cartels, they bring drugs and violence to every community across the Fruited Plain. They also bring with them child and human trafficking, enabling illegal immigrants to flood every state with people that are dependent on our nation's social safety nets, which is paid for by the sweat equity of every legal American citizen. Illegal immigrants do not bring diversity to our nation. They bring disease, drugs, human trafficking, and social dependence. Illegal immigrants suck up resources meant to educate and care for legal citizens. Are these narco-terrorists, drug cartels, and illegal immigrants the biggest threat to our liberty, though? Or are they like China and Russia, just a subset of what I believe to be the biggest threat to our liberty? You be the judge of that by the end of the show. Let's talk about a few more huge threats to the liberty of the citizens of these United States of America. Next up are the rogue nation states of Iran and North Korea. Do these two countries pose a significant threat to our liberty here at home? Sure, they have an impact on global affairs within their sphere of influence, but how much does their saber-rattling activities really influence our liberty? Outside of the government and the military-industrial complex using fear-mongering to get us involved in unconstitutional wars, is that a significant impact on our liberty here at home? Of course, the act of terrorism around the globe that are sponsored by these rogue regimes have a direct impact on the family of those who are victims, but on us as a nation? I'm not sure their actions have a huge impact on the liberties of the citizens of our nation. In fact, I believe they are significantly less impactful than Russia and China. But like Russia and China, I believe these rogue nations are just a subset of the bigger threat to our liberty. What other threats to our liberty are out there right now? Well, I know of a huge one that I discuss quite frequently on this show. It is government-run, meaning controlled, public education. The 2022 midterms showed us all just how much public government education has twisted the minds of the generation of Gen Z. Here are some statistics from those midterms and how Gen Z's voted. On abortion around 65% were motivated to vote to protect abortion access. About 70% of young people believe abortion should be legal in all or most cases. That regard for the sanctity of life almost mimics how the drug cartels and narco-terrorists feel about life, as I discussed earlier. So that leaves only 30% that believe abortion is morally wrong. Hmm, I wonder where they learn that. It definitely wasn't by the mothers that gave birth to them. The moms that gave them life were definitely not pro-abortion at the time of their pregnancy, right? These young people most likely learned it by suckling at the teat of Big Brother's public education system. Those government institutions, along with colleges and universities, that further that indoctrination. Also, only 45% of young people view capitalism positively. That is despite evidence to the contrary that shows capitalism has lifted more people out of poverty than any other economic system. Ever. Now get this though. 51% of those same young people view socialism positively. Again, this is despite evidence that socialism has never worked in all of human history. Why is that evidence ignored? Well, the evidence is only ignored by the public education system, not the children, because the evidence is not taught in public schools. Public schools are government schools. They are taught that socialism has never worked because it wasn't tried right before. They are taught that only the richest nation on the planet can do it correctly. This brings to mind a conversation I had with my daughter the other day. She is now a small business owner as well here in Sevier County. 
Being a small business owner comes with many more challenges with regards to tax season in our nation. Something these Gen Zers and some millennials that aren't small business owners will never understand because they aren't educated on things like that in government schools. They sure are getting educated on diversity, equity, and inclusion though, right? That dreaded DEI, which is only dreaded by normal people that are capable of critical thinking. Anyway, in my conversation with my daughter surrounding tax season, after some back and forth about the lessons I learned in dealing with taxes and tax filings, she had this to say about government education. Quote, I wish they taught classes in high school about taxes and actual life skills that you would use as an adult. They really do want to dumb down our kids and conform or brainwash them so they follow the corporate race. Always an employee and make other people money, meaning the government. Unquote. That really sums it up, doesn't it? Government schools don't educate children on the evils of socialism. They don't provide children with actual life skills. Instead, they are indoctrinated into believing they are either a victim or an oppressor. Government schools also try to teach our children that they can be something other than what they were born as, contributing to a pandemic of mental health problems. Look no further than all these young people who are turning themselves into mass shooters, like what happened in Nashville earlier this week. Government schools also don't educate children on the unique founding of our nation, except to say that it was built on the backs of slaves. Gen Zers, they like to tout their independence. But in the 2022 midterm elections, results from exit polls say that roughly 60% voted for Democrat candidates, while less than 37% voted for the Republican candidate. Exactly which of those parties can claim a majority membership of teachers in our nation? Teachers and an education system that do not teach the fundamentals of constitutional governance in our republic. Children are not taught that they are the masters of government. In fact, they are taught that government is the solution to all of our country's problems despite the fact that government caused almost all of those problems itself. As you all know, I really do think that public education in our republic is a huge threat to our liberty. At the rate we are currently going with that failed education system, it will not be long before the Gen Zers that are indoctrinated with that false ideology will drag this country headlong into socialism. And they'll do it in the voting booth. Remember this old adage, you can vote yourself into socialism, but you have to fight your way out of it. Once again, though, I believe that although public education is a huge threat to our liberty, it isn't the biggest. It only plays a role in what is turning out to be the biggest threat. It is a subset of it, like everything else that I've mentioned so far. What about international terrorist groups like ISIS and Al-Qaeda? We haven't touched on them yet. Are these international terrorist organizations a huge threat to our liberty at home? In some ways, they play a role. If you can remember, it was Al-Qaeda's attacks on 9-11 that spawned the creation of the Patriot Act. Oh, by the way, pay attention to what Congress is doing in trying to ban TikTok. It is a Trojan horse Patriot Act on steroids. But the Patriot Act has allowed our government to violate our civil liberties willy-nilly, often without the knowledge of the individual citizen either. But like acts of terrorism sponsored by rogue states like North Korea and Iran, outside of the immediate personal impact on individuals and families, just how much do they directly impact the erosion of liberty here at home? Much like the other threats to our liberty already discussed, These international terrorist organizations, they just play a role in the machinations of the biggest threat to our liberty. Now let's talk about the economy and inflation. We've discussed inflation before and how it is only caused by government spending. Milton Friedman, once the world's foremost economist, described that in detail. I shared his exact words on this show. It was on episode 77. You can go back and listen to that show again to refresh your memory. But despite this and previous administration's protestations to the contrary, it is government spending 
and only government spending that creates inflation. Nothing else. Definitely not one of the left's favorite demons, corporations and corporate greed. Government creates inflation and exacerbates it. But is economy and inflation a huge threat to our liberty? I believe it is a threat in that it directly impacts our ability to participate in our current system of self-governance. It also drains us of our sweat equity and drives up the cost of living in every facet of our lives. But like everything we have discussed so far, inflation and our current economic system are just mere subsets of the biggest threat to our liberty right now. Which finally leads me to reveal who I believe our biggest threat to liberty is right now. Before I let you know who or what I think it is, I have to ask you another question. And it is this. Who is the more dangerous of the two in a conflict? Your declared rival or a duplicitous ally? On the one hand, if you have a declared rival, you develop tactics, techniques, and procedures, TTPs, to defeat them. Not only through direct engagement or contact with your rival, but also by studying their TTPs. Some of the studies or observations are clandestine, meaning some of the TTPs you develop to counter or defeat your rival are clandestine as well. But the rivalry is right out there in the open. There are two declared sides in that conflict. Now, if you have a declared ally that is actually helping your rival in the conflict, which of the two is more dangerous to your success? Of course, it would be the ally who is in fact helping your rival and not you. So, the answer to the question, who is the biggest threat to our liberty? That is a duplicitous ally. And right now, this duplicitous ally is the Republican Party. Parts of the Republican Party, for sure. Not the entire, but parts of it. Many of you have heard in the last two episodes how the Republican Party here in Tennessee and in Sevier County has thwarted me at every turn in my attempts to bring conservatism back to my county and the state. Of course, there will be some who say that I am just venting against what happened to me, and that's true, but something else is true. It isn't just me that the Tennessee Republican Party has gone after. It is conservatives all over the state that are working to bring the state's Republican Party back to its constitutional roots. It has happened to Gary Humble during and after his primary election contest against Tennessee Senate Majority Leader Jack Johnson. There was also the election to the state executive committee by the state's Republican Party that was nullified by that party when Mark Pulliam won the seat in a write-in campaign last year. In essence, the GOP in that situation completely disregarded the will of the people. Sounds like a party committed to constitutional principles, doesn't it? In my case, it was bylaw rules for thee and not for me as it relates to being a bona fide Republican, along with the party's extra-constitutional residency and, let's not forget, the fee requirements to run for office. Now there's the latest coming out of Williamson County where that county's GOP has broken every one of the rules in the state GOP's bylaws as they relate to the biannual reorganization convention. They absolutely had to break the rules because more than 500 true conservatives had signed up to vote in new leadership for that county's party. The establishment GOP, our supposed allies in the fight against the left and socialism, cannot stand for the people they once took for granted to attain leadership position within the county's party. So, what we once thought was our ally in this struggle has actually been stabbing us in the back. An organization full of traitors to liberty. People who you once thought were allies are actually aiding and abetting the enemy. These stories, Sevier County, Blunt County, Williamson County, and even my latest discovery of shenanigans in Athens, Tennessee, they are common to nearly every county in the state. And it isn't just here in Tennessee either. It's happening on a national level as well. Rona McDaniel and the national GOP has taken advantage of conservatives all over the country, all the while aiding and abetting the Democrat, I mean 
the Communist Party. There have been some conservative victories recently, but they have come in spite of state and national GOP assistance. The last midterms are a good example where conservatives were either not supported by the establishment GOP or the establishment actually worked against the conservatives working in tandem with the communists. After the 2020 presidential election, they worked feverishly to raise funds for election integrity as well as to expose the fraud that occurred in that election. And what do they have to show for that? Well, exactly. What did they do with all of that money? I could tell you that it wasn't used to expose the fraud or to fight for election integrity measures. It was used to fund a lifestyle the establishment has grown used to through their past fundraising efforts that are pure fraud in itself. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, it turns out the biggest threat to our liberty are the traitors in our midst. They speak out of both sides of their mouth, and the only people that are actually seeing a benefit from their duplicitousness are the communists in our republic. An ally that isn't really an ally is much more dangerous than the known and acknowledged rival. Specifically, if you are counting on the supposed ally in the fight to restore constitutional principles. Many parts of the GOP, at the state and national level, are nothing more than a good old boy network out to maintain their own lifestyle and leadership positions. They are no longer concerned with the condition of our republic and its state of retrograde. Nonetheless, though, we must continue the fight. We just have to find better allies. You can find them by getting out in your community and collaborating with other liberty-loving patriots. Willing to step into the arena and suffer the barbs, accusations, and belittling by the people that preach love and acceptance, but only love and acceptance of their beliefs. They are intolerant of anything outside of those beliefs. So be brave. We did not ask for this fight, but we have to fight anyway. Well, that is all the time I have this week, ladies and gentlemen. In closing, we have this week's wisdom from God's Word, and it comes to us from Proverbs 26, 26. Their malice may be concealed by deception, but their wickedness will be exposed in the assembly. The greatest threat to liberty of liberty-loving citizens, not the socialist and communism-loving citizens, is the political party that lies to our face. The political party that, with one face, tells us they will fight for constitutional principles that they will fight against the creeping socialism that is on the verge of taking over this great constitutional republic, but with the other face work to prevent true constitutionalists and conservatives from being elected to office. They will give lip service to the principles of liberty, freedom, and constitutionally protected rights, but will in all actuality work to erode those same principles. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, their deception conceals their malice towards true conservatism. Their wickedness is now being exposed by those same people, but the number fighting them is extremely small. It is time for true conservatives, true believers in our beloved Constitution, to take a stand in the arena, not only against the obvious foes of liberalism and socialism, but also to take a stand against those within the Republican Party that work against the actual Republican Party platform. We all need the number of people taking a stand in this arena to grow, to expose people like Scott Golden of the Tennessee Republican Party and Rona McDaniel of the National Republican Party and all their minions that are working at the county level all over the country. Seek the ones out that are fighting this fight and stand arm in arm with them. Encourage them. Become one yourself. Start locally by taking over school boards in the city or county commissions, or even leadership positions within your state Republican Party. Be a leader of change locally and on the state level. When enough of us do that, then we can truly change the tide. We can fix the course our nation is currently on right now. The course that not only the leftists have put us on, but the one the greatest threat to our liberty has enabled the left to be successful in putting us on. Thank you all for listening this week, and I pray that you all enjoy the rest of your weekend. 
Until next week, stand in the arena with me. Reveille, it's time to wake up.